we can already find out if the user is signed in or not. Now we just need to take him to the appropriate page upon launching the app because now the user always ends up on this sign in page no matter if the user is signed in or not. And for this to work, we're going to create a splash page and also an auth block. Hello, welcome to Resocoru, where you are getting prepared for real app development so that you will get freelance clients or a job and be confident about the apps you build. So subscribe and hit the bell to join us on our quest for becoming in-demand Flutter developers. Many of the tough things are already set up from the previous parts. For example, we have fully set up our Firebase authentication facade and other things as well. So now we're just going to make sure that it's all glued together properly. We are going to start off by creating a block under the auth feature right here in the application layer because it's a block. We already have the sign in form block, but that's only responsible for this page, this sign in page for handling the field input and handling the button clicks and so on. But we also need to have some sort of a general authentication or auth block, which will do things like check for the authentication status. And also this block will sign out the user if needed. So let's create such a block by right clicking on the auth folder. And let's say block new block from the menu, we are going to call this auth. We do not want to use equatable. And this thing has been created in the auth folder, we just want to take these files and put them to the root of the auth folder. So we're going to have structure resembling this. And by the way, if you'd like to get this code, you can do so from the link in the video description, which is going to take you to GitHub. As always, with block, we do not just have one class, but we have multiple classes. So we have the block event and state classes. And again, we are going to use freeze to facilitate unions, which are going to make our lives so much easier. So because we are going to use freeze, as you've seen in uh, some of the previous parts, uh, it generates code and auth state and auth event files are a part of the root auth block dot dart file. So we navigate to that root sort of file of this uh, of this triplet. And we are going to create a PTF, which is a part freeze statement. If you have that uh, code snippet copied already into your VS code from the previous parts, if not, you can always get the code from GitHub and just uh, paste this full line in there. So now that we have this, we can go about uh, setting up how the events and states are going to look like. So as you know, already, events are for things which we want the block to accomplish. This is what comes into the block, and it tells the block what to do. So what is our block going to respond to? Or what is it going to do? Well, it's going to check the authentication status. And it's also possibly going to sign the user out when the user presses a sign out button. So therefore, we are going to create a freeze union. So again, F union, our beloved code snippet, we're going to call it auth event. And the first thing, the first union case will be auth check requested like this. And let's copy the name to the right. But this is the class name. So it's going to be upper case as it should be. Let's import freeze. So control or command dot. Let's import freeze annotation. It's actually going to be added over to the auth block. 
because that's the original, the root file of this triplet of files. It's been added right here. And with this said, let's go over to the event file again, uh, copy the union case below. And the next one is going to be signed out. We are following the block naming conventions, which say that you should name your events in the past tense as if they already happened. I'm not entirely sure about this naming convention actually, but since we have started with this naming convention, we are going to follow it, but actually you can just name your events however you like, just make sure that you are consistent about it. Consistency is key as always. So what we can now do, of course, is run the build command after we sign or we save the alt block file too. So we run the build command I just hit Alt X and this command is also hopefully going to be available from the video description. So when we run this flutter pump run build run watch delete conflicting outputs, this event freeze file is going to be generated. And while we are waiting in the meantime, we can go over to the auth state. And this is also going to be uh, freeze union. So F union, it's going to be called of course, auth state. And the first one will be initial. Let's also set initial to be the class name. Okay, now copy it below two times. So we have three states because of course, initial is when we are not yet sure if the user is authenticated or not, because we need to check the Firebase auth facade for that. Right here, we have the method called get signed in user. And if this get signed in user from Firebase auth facade returns null, it means that we are not signed in. If it returns some user, literally some user actually, because it's an option, you see, uh, functional programming naming conventions are actually quite nice. So if it returns some user, then we know that we are in fact signed in. But until we call this get signed in user method, we have no clue whether or not we are signed in. And that's what this initial state represents. So it logically flows from this that the next state which we are going to have is authenticated. All right, let's copy it over to the left side. Actually, I'm just going to duplicate this line like this, because the next state is of course on authenticate it. The same goes for the class name unauthenticated. When we save that, we have the events and states generated. And actually, you cannot see the generated files because I have this nifty extension right here, right? So yeah, you can see that they are in fact present the auth block freeze that dart file is present there. And by the way, this extension is called something like toggle excluded files right here. This is the one. So if you want to use it, check it out toggle excluded files. It's quite nice if you use code generation a lot. Okay, so we have the states, we have the events. Now, what are we going to do when they actually arrive into the block, right? Because that's what we are all about, of course. Firstly, we need to fix up our block, which currently returns a non existent instance, which is going to be in this case, const auth state dot initial. By the looks of it, auth block is probably going to need to communicate with the Firebase auth facade, but because we are inside the application layer, this means that we are now going to communicate directly with the infrastructure layer, which holds the Firebase auth facade, the concrete implementation. No, we are instead going to communicate with the abstract iauth facade. So let's do just that. We are going to create final iauth facade auth facade private field. 
let's hit control dot or command dot and create constructor for final fields with this done this would be of no use because we have not yet marked our auth block to be injectable injectable annotation will make sure that we can for one inject this auth block or find it with get it and it's also going to make sure that the constructor is being passed in proper instances in this case i auth facade so if we take a look to the injection injection i config that dart file what we are going to be able to see is that we have just registered a factory of type auth block and it's being passed an i auth facade into the constructor completely hands up approach we did not need to write this horrible code it was all done for us by the injectable package and that's why it's so awesome to use such code generating packages even though sure you need to run your code generation commands but uh, in my opinion that's a fair price to pay okay if we come back to the auth block we are now going to implement of course the map event to state method so we are going to yield each because we want to map the incoming events and this event is of course just a freezed union so we can use the map method and now we are going to hit Control D or Command D on Mac to select the other null keyword as well delete that and we are going to say block events handler which is a code snippet I have in VS Code and you maybe have it too if you have gotten it uh, from the previous parts of this tutorial series if not you can always just write this whole anonymous method definition over here so with this done we are now in just a few keystrokes handling all of the events incoming into the block so what do we want to do if auth check is requested well we first want to get hold of either some or none of the currently signed in user so we are going to call await auth facade dot get signed in user this returns option user so we are going to store this inside final user option with this stored in this uh, final variable we are now going to yield so basically return for all intents and purposes from this map event to state user option dot fold and fold is just a simple method which can which is a branch it's sort of like an if statement so if there is none if there is no user present which means the user is not authenticated well which state do we want to yield from this map event to state well of course in that case we want to yield auth state that unauthenticated and because we are using linter with a custom custom setup linter basically we now get this squiggly line and when i hit control dot or command dot i can add the const modifier automatically like this and again if you would like to learn more about linting in dart how it works and how to set it up properly check out the tutorial from the card in the corner and what are we going to do with this next folder method well we actually do not need its value because it's just a user if this method runs it means that there is some user present which means that the current user is in fact signed in in that case we want to return const 
auth state dot authenticated. Okay, so let's put a comma here, a semicolon at the end to format everything properly. And this is how the auth check requested event handler looks like. Now, what's up with this signed out event? Well, it's pretty simple. We just want to call await auth facade dot sign out. And then we just want to yield const auth state dot unauthenticated because of course after signing out we are unauthenticated and now something bad has happened it seems or maybe not i'm not sure why we had those uh, red squiggly lines under the event and state things <laughs> files so really not sure about that, but it seems that everything is working properly. Okay, uh, just the analyzer or VS code is behaving a bit weird today. So no apparent issues are present, which is totally cool with me, if you ask me. Currently, we have only one real page present in the app, and that is the sign in page. But now we are about to start adding other pages as well, and we are going to need to navigate in between them. Uh, in this part, we are going to add the splash page, which is going to decide what to show at the beginning after the user launches the app. That's where we are going to call this auth check requested event from. And in order to navigate to other pages, we can just use the material page route or we can use uh, named routes and set it up all by ourselves. Or we can introduce another dependency, which is going to make our lives so much easier. It's not a golden bullet, but uh, in this case, it's precisely what is going to uh, facilitate easier writing of the code. So I would say, let's go for it. It's actually quite a cool library it's called auto route or auto route however you want to pronounce it so we're going to go over to the to the pubspec.yaml file and we are going to use the nifty pubspec assist extension and i'm going to search for auto route so let's add auto route currently at the version 0.5.0 and it's absolutely crucial that you follow this tutorial series with uh, the versions which are over here you can check out uh, if you're watching this in the future you can check out the finished code over on github which is going to be perpetually updated over time when new things are released but I cannot guarantee that uh, no interface changes are going to happen. So just if you want to follow along, do yourself a favor and uh, use the package versions which are present right now in the popspec.yml file. Okay, enough about that. I hope that I have scared you enough. If not, well, uh, whatever, <laughs> no problem. So now we want to add a dev dependency which is going to be the auto route generator. And with this done, we can now save this popspec.yaml file. By the way, auto route and injectable are both from the same author. And it's totally awesome that he creates these sorts of libraries. Milat Akari. Hopefully your name has not been butchered by me. If so, excuse my <laughs> pronunciation. So now because we have just updated pubspec.yml we need to rerun the build command so let's do just that and we are going to set up our router because auto route works uh, by code generation again and it's actually quite simple even if you don't know nothing about it yet after 
seeing how it's all set up very simply, you are going to absolutely love it. So we are going to create under presentation, we're going to create a new folder, which is going to be for the routes. And inside this routes folder, we are going to create new file router.dart. And over here, it's going to be absolutely simple. We just want to have a class router with a dollar sign before it. And this will contain the definitions or the yeah, definitions of routes, which are going to be available in our app. So we are going to have the sign in page, of course, let's call it sign in page. And this is really it mostly, we just need to annotate this class with at, for example, material route or material auto router. Yep. And let's also set generate navigation helper extensions to be true. We're going to see what that means in just a bit. Of course, we are going to add other pages over here as well. And also the splash page, which we are going to create later on in this part. So let's take a look at the generator output. What it does is that it creates these names for the routes automatically by itself. And it generates the on generate route, which handles these generated routes. And then the flag generate navigation helper extension. What this does is that it generates this extension, of course. So instead of writing push named and the name of the route, we can just call a simple method push sign and page on the navigator. And it's going to do this uh, push named and the name for us, which is pretty nifty. If you ask me, you're actually going to see this all in action and I'm losing my voice, but whatever, I'm going to finish this tutorial, no matter what. So we have the authentication block, which is going to perform the checks and all of that. We also have the preparation for routing, which is going to be simply done by code generation using the auto route library. What we have yet to do is to actually tell our authentication block to perform this auth check. And where should we initiate these, this auth check? I say that something like this should happen as soon as possible. So this means that it should either happen in the main dart file over here, or in the app widget. Because these are the two things which run firstly. Well, unlike with the configure injection call, which can or actually must happen from within the main method, we have to initiate our workings with the authentication block in the widget tree, because we want to also provide the auth block down the widget tree to all of the routes which are present in our app. So that's why we are going to wrap this material app with a multi block provider. So let's actually wrap it with a widget. Multi block provider is its name. Oh, actually, we cannot use the snippet. So I have to type it out all by myself, but that's fine. Multi block provider. This takes in providers list and a child of material app. And now we want to specify that the block which we are providing is going to be the auth block. So it's going to take in a block provider. And we are going to instantiate here the auth block, but we cannot just write auth block instantiation like this. So the method of 
will give us a context. Doing something like this is not possible because again, we are missing the the parameter or the argument of I of facade, which should be passed into the block. And that's precisely why we have the injectable package and get it in order to be able to get our off block all injected and well prepared for further use. So we're going to call get it off block. Let's import also our injection file. And of course, we are missing one pointy bracket, but that's fine. So far, we are only providing the off block to all of the other pages which are going to be present inside of our app because we are actually wrapping the top level material app. And by the virtue of that, our block is going to be available literally everywhere. What we are not yet doing though, is initializing the authentication check. And we certainly do want to do that. So we're going to say add with the cascade operator. So two dots, and we want to add an event of events auth check requested. So of course, what this is going to do is that the auth check is going to start to happen. And we need to have a way to actually listen to the result of the auth check, which means we need to be able to listen to the state, which is being emitted by the block. And that's what the block listener widget is for to observe the block. And where are we going to observe the block from? Well, certainly not from the sign in page, which is currently being the home of our material app. No, we need to have a separate page, which is going to be basically the decision maker about where to navigate next. If the user is signed in, we're going to navigate to the home page, which is going to show the user the notes. But if the user is not signed in, we are going to navigate to the sign in page. And all of that is going to be decided upon in the splash page. So we need to get rid of this home sign in page of our material app. And actually, because we are using auto route library, we are going to set up the builder of our material app, and we are going to set it to be extended navigator, which comes from auto route and pass in our generated router class. This is the class which contains all of that good stuff like on generate route, for example, and the generated route names. And again, you can get this code from the link in the video description, if it becomes too much to handle <laughs> at once. So basically, what we are doing with this builder is that we are overriding the default navigator with this extended navigator, which has some additional functionality, and it's coming from the auto route package, it actually itself extends the default navigator, but it adds some goodies on top of it. So let's now create the splash page, right? We're going to right click on presentation, say new folder splash. And under that create a new widget or the file, which is going to be splash page dot dart. And inside of it, we are going to have a stateless widget. So st ls splash page. Let's import material dot dart. And let's actually return a block listener. So block listener is useful for doing things which basically cannot happen during build. So something like navigation 
is certainly something which cannot happen during build and so that's why we need to use the block listener which runs after the build has finished we want to listen to the authentication block so we need to provide generic parameters of block and also the state which we are intending to observe is the auth state therefore and now let's just set up the listener which is going to grant us uh, context and uh, auth state right here so of course let's import auth block and we are going to be all set much better now and we just want to map through all of the states which are possible and let's again use control d to select all of the null keywords and we are going to write delete or backspace and parentheses we basically want to create a function here which is going to ignore its passed in parameter okay let's add the much needed comma and semicolon at the end to make everything seem right and what do we want to do on these state changes so if the state is currently initial we do not want to do anything we can just ignore it with this empty function if the state is authenticated we want to say extended navigator this is something like calling navigator off and then we want to say push replacement named and what is going to be the route name well it's going to be routes dot of course import routes dot nothing actually right now because we have only the sign in page present and sure that we do not have the notes overview page yet which is going to show us all of the user notes so we're just going to comment this uh, authenticated event out for now we're actually we're just going to ignore it sorry about that but what we certainly can do is implement the unauthenticated event so we are going to say extended navigator again dot off context and say push replacement named and the route name will be routes sign in page okay and actually just so that we know that the user is authenticated let's just print something so i am authenticated okay and of course we want the splash page to show something because currently it would be just completely black nothing would be present over there because block listener doesn't have any ui of itself so we are going to create a child and let's set it to be a scaffold which is just going to display a simple body which is going to be a center widget holding a circle or progress indicator like that and because everything over here is actually constant we can make this whole scaffold constant and we should be good to go right now all we need to do is to go over to the router dot dart and we currently specify only the sign in page as the sole page of our app but actually we have just added the splash page so let's add splash page and what is splash page well it is the initial route which should be displayed in our app so that's why we're going to mark it as initial and what this is going to accomplish is that if we check out the generator output our splash page has the 
one slash being its name. And this means that it's going to be navigated to by default when the app starts. Okay, so let's just hot restart the app. And when I open up the emulator, something is not playing right. Builder for route forward slash returned null. So maybe we need to hot restart again. Okay, now we see that something is in fact happening. So it looks like we are actually signed in already from the previous time we've tried to sign in. We can check that out actually. Going into the console and we can see I am authenticated. So this means we are currently authenticated and we should actually, if there were such a page, navigate over to the overview of the user's notes. But currently we just print something out to the console. So actually, if we want to test out if uh, we can also go to the unauthenticated uh, route, which is the sign in page, we need to stop the app and I'm going to clear out the files. So here we are, probably this is the correct app and I can just delete the, I have it actually in Slovak. So anyway, I can vymazať priestor and odstraní data aplikácia, all right. And here we go. So now when I build this app again, we should not be authenticated because it should not remember anything from the previous sessions because we have just cleared up the data. And sure enough, you could for a very brief moment see the progress indicator, but then we have immediately jumped into the sign in page, which is good. But once we sign in, all right, with Google, for example, we are signed in, of course, we do not navigate anywhere because that's not yet implemented. But when I again hot restart the app, now we are again stuck at the loading of the splash page and we see I am authenticated, which is precisely what we wanted to see. And that's it for this part. We have covered quite a lot of ground here. We have created a block, the auth block for uh, checking the auth state. And also further down the line, we are actually gonna sign out with this block. We have also added the auto route package for simplifying the routing process. It's totally simple. We have fully fledged named routes in just a few lines of code and everything is generated for us. And we have also added the splash page, which is responsible for uh, listening to the output of the auth block. And this is where the navigation actually happens. And last but not least, we have also gone over to the app widget where we provide the auth block globally to the whole app, to all of the routes. And this is also where we initiate working with this block by checking if we are authenticated. And if you have not seen this pattern yet, it's actually quite cool. If you add an event with the cascade operator immediately after basically instantiating the block, this is something you're probably going to do all the time it's a really useful thing to know about. This is how you can instantiate and also tell the block to do something right from the get go. If you don't want to miss more tutorials like this, where we go over the domain driven design aspects till we are tired of it. And also if you want to see some tutorials about UI implementations, some crazy animations in Flutter and all such good things, 
be sure to subscribe to this channel and also join the notification squad by hitting the bell button to make sure you grow your Flutter skills because here on Reso Coder, I am determined to provide you with the best tutorials and resources so that you will become an in-demand Flutter developer. And if you are serious about becoming a great Flutter developer who can build real apps for clients or at the job, go to flutter.education, link is also in the video description, to get the top curated Flutter news and resources aimed at improving your app development career. Over there, you can also subscribe to my mailing list to get the best Flutter resources delivered weekly right into your inbox. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it with other developers who are surely going to find it beneficial too. Leave a comment if you have anything to say and see you in the next video.